Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Kent for Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. It's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. We're a little green today. Celebrate the Irish. We're all a little bit Irish on St. Patrick's Day. We're brought to you by a great Irishman, the wonderful Mike O'Neill, Dennis to the Stars up here in Fishers, 317-849-2933. Make him your dentist today like I did 27 years ago. Best dentist I've ever gone to. Only dentist I've gone to in those 27 years. All right, let's talk about Brad Stevens and the Indiana job. I got to tell you, I watched the clip last night of his pregame press conference before Boston played Utah. And for the first time, like prior to this, it was a nice dream. Thinking that Brad might be the coach at Indiana. Uh, and, and you hold out hope. He's a great guy, a wonderful human being, diligent, smart, all the things you want in a coach. But my God, it's the Boston Celtics. And is he going to come back to college and go into recruiting and all of that stuff? And there's the pragmatics about it. And you really start to think about it. And you see, you think, okay, well, let's keep this in dream world and not think about the reality of it maybe occurring. And then he said this. He was asked about the job and he said, it means a lot. Um, It means a lot. I know that, listen, I've got a lot of friends back there. I've got a lot of people that are really important to me there. My dad's still there. That means a lot. I won't act like it doesn't. Like I said earlier today, it's flattering. Then he said, but I also realize I'm the coach of the Celtics, and that's, it's been an, an amazing opportunity, an amazing challenge every day for the last eight years, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Okay, the key word, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. The key word is been. It's been an amazing opportunity. That's past tense. That's not, it's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing opportunity. I look forward to continuing. He said, it's been. And that's past tense. And all of a sudden, I got real excited. I got goosebumps last night thinking about Brad Stevens, the reality of that, that Brad Stevens might become the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. And and I also heard earlier yesterday, Rick Pitino on with Dan Dockich on 107.5 The Fan, when Dan asked about the Indiana job and maybe Rick Pitino would be interested in the job. And Rick Pitino said, I tell you what you do if you're the AD at Indiana, you get on a plane, you fly to Boston and you get the deal done. That's what you do. Interesting times to be an Indiana fan. And it, it, like when I heard, and thanks to Scott Agnes uh, for putting that out there uh, from Fieldhouse Files, the, the piece of video from Brad Stevens, because at that point it became real to me that Brad Stevens could actually become the head coach at Indiana. And why is that important? He's not an Indiana guy. He didn't graduate from Indiana, but he is an Indiana guy. Grew up in Zionsville, went to DePaul, uh, talked his way into an unpaid coaching position at Butler, ascended from that position to the next, to the next, to the next, as Collier became Mata and Mata became Licklider, and all of a sudden Brad's a head coach. Hard, hard working guy. Two guys were at every single game my son's AAU team played it, it, for a couple of summers. Brad Stevens and Dane Fife. They were relentless in recruiting that team. And that team was the group that brought Matt Howard and Zach Hahn to Butler, and they don't become, Butler doesn't become, that national champion uh, finalist team without Matt Howard and Zach Hahn. And for Dane, he got Ben Botts of Muncie Central to go up play at IPFW, and that was an absolute crucial key for the Mastodons and, and what they became under Dane Fife, which was a team that was in, an independent and had no chance of winning. None at IPFW. Not only did they win, they found their way to a conference, and they won in the conference. Dane Fife was terrific as well. But Brad Stevens last night got real for me. Um, Jacoby Brissett, we'll see what happens today, right? Jacoby Brissett, he signed with the Miami Dolphins, $5 million guaranteed, another two and a half in incentives. If he meets those incentives, Jacoby Brissett, a really good guy and a good citizen in Indianapolis for the time he was here 
we wish him all the luck in the world. But seven and a half million for a backup quarterback is not something you're going to pay if you're Chris Ballard. So uh, Jacoby Brissett now becomes uh, a Miami Dolphin, and Jacob Eason may become the backup quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He would save him some money in that role. And if Carson Wentz could remain healthy, you know, you feel pretty good about not spending $46 million on the quarterback position and instead spending about 25 and change on the quarterback. That would be a nice thing for Chris Ballard. Everything quiet with the Colts. Uh, but free agency doesn't start until today at 4 o'clock. And Chris Ballard doesn't work the phones. You know what? He doesn't call Adam Schefter or Chris Mortensen or any of those guys to report him going to the bathroom every time he gets up from his desk. That's not the way Chris Ballard works. So I wouldn't expect to hear anything about the Colts until 4 o'clock this afternoon, and then I would expect to hear something. I don't think the Colts are going to stand pat with vacancies at left tackle, a straight-up vacancy. Hey, ain't nobody there. They're not going to upgrade there. They don't have one. And then you've got cornerback, you've got wide receiver, you've got linebacker. You have some areas, maybe tight end Zach Ertz has asked for and received permission from the Philadelphia Eagles to seek a trade. Would the Colts be a team that would be interested in Zach Ertz? I would be. Uh, over the course of 2015 through 2019, when he was healthy throughout that entire period, he averaged 86 catches a year for the Eagles, and a lot of those balls were thrown by Carson Wentz. Uh, last year, he only played 11 games, but he, he's back to health, and so you would hope that he would be a guy that the Colts might look at to upgrade at the tight end position, although they don't like making trades. <laughs> you know, unless it's a guy, a dynamic kind of a, a game-changing guy like DeForest Buckner at the three technique, making a trade for draft, draft picks, not something they're terribly interested in. I loved what happened yesterday. Sister Jean is a national treasure. She's coming to Indianapolis to watch her beloved Loyola Ramblers. Yesterday she was asked about her bracket, and she looked and she goes, well, I don't see a lot of the teams that are normally on there, like Kentucky. I love that. Sister Jean at 101 throwing shade at Big Blue Nation. That's wonderful. That just, that warms my heart, right? Like, who doesn't love Sister Jean? But now she's throwing shade at Kentucky. I love her all the more. Uh, a treasure is Sister Jean. <laughs> um, Andy Dalton to the Bears for $10 million. $10 million one year. Bears fans, man, your heads had to explode. It's always angry Andy Dalton. Coming to save the day for the Chicago Bears. You got Nick Foles and, and Andy Dalton, for God's sake. This is a team, my God, how hard would it be to find a single quarterback since Sid Luckman? How hard could it be? You had Jim McMahon, and then he got hurt, and that wasn't good. And then you go out and you make the big splashy trade for Jay Cutler, not knowing, I don't, I don't know if you knew who Jay Cutler was. You found out who Jay Cutler was. Now you sign Always Angry Andy to a one-year deal for $10 million. <laughs> Ryan Pace. <laughs> That's just beautiful. I love it. Uh, Pacers home tonight, 7 o'clock at, uh, at Bankers Life Fieldhouse playing the Nets. The Nets are going to be without Durant. They're going to be without Dinwiddie. They're going to be without Griffin. So uh, hopefully the Pacers can end this home losing streak and, and get kind of back on the beam. Karis LeVert going to play against his old team. I think it's terrific. I love Karis LeVert. And, and the vibe of the Pacers, while it hasn't been really successful, uh, their results, I love the vibe. So uh, we'll see what they get done tonight against the Nets as they you know, play their last home game for a while. They come back just this one game. And then because the NCAA tournament is here in total, uh, in Indianapolis and Bloomington and West Lafayette, at least in the first round. You know what? Uh, Pacers going out of town. It's like the old ice show days at Market Square Arena. Uh, birthdays. Let's celebrate birthdays. Jared Duke, happy birthday. Or uh, no, John Elrod, happy birthday. Eugene Haloon, happy birthday. Uh, Chris Nadeau, happy birthday. The great Kevin Clausen, Tracy Hostetter, 
Happy birthday, Eric Crawford, the great Eric Crawford. Uh, Mike Smith and Skip Mills, happy birthday. If today's your birthday, celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, celebrate somebody else that's best done with an honest and specific compliment. Today, inside Indiana Sports Now, what do you think we're talking about? We'll talk about free agency and, and maybe a hole that's going to be plugged today for the Indianapolis Colts. And we will look again. We're, we're going to sift through the tea leaves, baby, and try to see another reason that maybe Brad Stevens is coming. It, it, to me, like it, it's gotten to the point, I think, where you throw water on this if, if you're IU. If you can't get Brad Stevens, and, and this is the reason why if you couldn't get Brad Stevens, you make the hire quick, and you, you stop this kind of tidal wave of enthusiasm from engulfing uh, a fan base who is starting to really to really dream, and, and, and it's no longer kind of a dream, it's foreseeing that Brad Stevens might be the guy. And, and here's another reason to believe it might be Brad Stevens, is that Scott Dolson, as the athletic director, kept uh, uh, three members of the Indiana basketball staff around to continue to train these guys and put them in a position where they can be successful and continue to develop their game. A lot of times when you blow out a coach and you're going to replace him quickly, the entire staff is launched and the kids work out on their own for a few days until a replacement is hired. That didn't happen here. This is Indiana hunkering down for what may become a period of time when they're between head coaches, which would lead you to believe that it's possible it's going to be Brad. I know, we're looking at tea leaves, we're living in hope, and maybe we die in desperation, but it's a hell of a lot of fun while it lasts, isn't it? All right, we'll talk to you a little bit later today. And subscribe, always subscribe, watching this, listening to this, ring the bell, like this. Let's go. Have a great day. Have a great St. Patrick's Day.